God, it's wet underfoot. Uh, in this one, I'm looking at a couple of splits I made up earlier in the year. We pay a visit to the Yorkshire Shore and I'm going to have a look upon the mower and see how the heather's coming on. Is it time to start moving the bees up there yet? Just at the site that was flooded, uh, those hives at the far end, those have been here all, all through, right through winter and, and spring. Uh, there's the hornet trap. Move back in among the hives and then from there onwards, the number 114, this side of the hornet trap, these are all uh, splits that I brought here. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven of them. And uh, so far I've found one drone layer. I've, got, I've done one, two, three, four, under my fifth. The second one in, two, one, nine. That's a drone layer. Again, take the notice of the number of supers on them. One to my fifth one. And uh, I'm quite pleased with this one. I've just pulled one frame of brood out. Well, took the outside frame out. I left that dock there just as a marker for a And uh, these are the top splits of the queen cells. And look at that, a frame of brood. I would suggest there's nothing wrong with them. I mean, some of them I've done aren't as good as this. Um, as I say, using this system, you get some good and some bad and some mediocre ones. But I think the same can be said for any other system. Whether you're buying queens in, rearing them yourself or whatever. There's nothing wrong with that queen, nothing. Eggs in there. Ah. I'll only have a look at another couple, I don't need to go any further. A new queen. Rather there. Uh, I was at the site this morning where there was some other splits and they were bad. Uh, Half of them were drawn layers, cleanless. But here, somehow, they seem to be better. And this site does owe me. The uh, 8th of July. Make a nice stock for the heather there, Will. See what its mates like next door. Yeah, it doesn't look quite so good. I mean, it's a form I left in and then pulled out. doesn't look so good. In fact, this looks pretty poor. I have a really bad feeling about this one. Oh, well, there's a surprise. Uh, it's hardly successful. But there is actually sealed work abroad there. Not masses of it. And it's, it's, the pattern of it's all right, there's not much of it. Over the next frame. Yeah, not great, but. It's a viable. It won't do much good at the head there, I don't think, but uh, we should make it, should make a wintering stock. I think they've possibly just been lacking in bees, these, this split. Yeah, anyway, that's the way it is. The good, the bad and the indifferent. I had a day at the Yorkshire Shore and that had to include, of course, a visit to the bees and honey section. Yorkshire Beekeepers Pavilion there. That's our youngest grandson, Joel, another little character. What's on my finger, Joel? Bees. <laughs> Good lad. Bees come out, yeah. There we go. 
this first prize window exhibit really caught my eye. A display of bee produce to go in a shop window. Great stuff. And here's Ted stood in front of the biggest piece of farm machinery I think I've ever seen. Potato harvester. Immense. And this 1940s Bedford wagon. It'd still have uses today as a bee truck. And one of the oldest breeds of cattle and one of my favourites, the Longhorns. Beautiful. Fourteenth of July, just having a look up on the mower, see how the heather's coming on. Just an indication of the amount of rain we've had. All those cobbles down there on the road have washed out of this track, I think. Yeah. It's a summer and a half this one for being wet. I mean they're quite big some of these. Been some force of water there to move them. Well, they yow and lamb. They're the predominant sheep on these mowers. A lot of white clover right on the side of the track. Thistles coming into flower. They're the mower in the background. The thistles and the clover can add to the crop. They can dilute the purity of the heather somewhat. There's not a lot we can do about that. The problem of glasses on a wet day. Water running just about everywhere. Ah, dear. So here we have some heather in flower, but it isn't the ling. This isn't this isn't the plant that produces our heather honey. This is bell heather, the bell heath. Getting close enough, you can see the individual flowers are, are bell shaped, hence the name for it. And it does produce honey, a dark honey. Uh, I've never been able to harvest it as a single source honey. What we're waiting for flowering is the ling. This one here with the little white buds on. A bit off yet. Just as well really because I'm nowhere near ready. Some heather here. Early stage buds. Some bell heather there in the bottom in flower. See there the of the flowers it's the 14th of july and some years early years i've started moving bees on the moor on the 16th two days time but i haven't even taken any of the summer honey i've got the colonies ready in any way whatsoever uh the ongoing bad weather isn't helping i mean all sorts of issues and one thing is with this bad weather and it's going to continue for at least another week uh if i check what bit of honey they've got off uh, I'll leave them very prone to starvation again. I intend leaving them half a box of honey or whatever on. Doing what I can. But seeing as how this is so far off, I'm just going to hold fire a bit. The trouble is, if you've got a lot of colonies to move, you need to start early. Um, I'm not taking as many as I used to do. The most I ever took in a single year, I think it was 17 loads. It was 17 days and nights continuously moving them uh, load them on a night leave one of them overnight on the vehicle and then away the following morning early five o'clock thereabouts to tip them uh, and then that following night another load on and the trouble is if it's, if it's better weather good weather you're not getting back with that load of bees till it can be almost 11 o'clock the very latest you, you can sometimes be back at half nine ten but it can be 11 o'clock then you're away again at five uh, you know you're doing it, that's for sure. Another thing I used to cope with a lot better when I was younger. So there we are, you can see the purple of the bell heather and the ling. The one we're after is somewhere off yet. Very earliest buds. I'll climb up on the top and have a look at the wider picture. Bilberry growing here as well. I believe that's our version of the blueberry. See the tiny little berries there? The patch here being 
flattened using the topper. I've been so wet that I haven't hardly been able to do any burning this time. So as I mentioned in another video, the idea is to get different lengths of heather, different habitats. Proper patchwork quilt of different lengths of heather. Nothing looking like it's anywhere near flowering yet. Oh, I tell a lie. Here we are. That's about there. Some heather there in flower. Hmm. There's always some a bit earlier than others, but overall, there's nothing really. Short heather here. I think by the curve of that longer stuff, this looks as though it's been burnt. A year or two back. And then I think this may have been topped two years ago. Heather's coming back. Very small plants. Some might look at this and think a wasteland. I just look at it and think it's beautiful. Something very special about the, the mowers and taking bees on to try and get try and produce heather honey. Not easy. It's a lot of hard work, but uh, in seasons like this, yeah, I've just caught between a rock and hard place really. Uh, when do I start? Once I start taking that bit of summer honey off the bees I've got, I'm leaving vulnerable. If the weather continues bad, I can bring them up here and they still won't do any good. It's all a risk. Low cloud. Mist. And cold with it. What to do? What to do?